I'm always so surprised when it works. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. And I'm so glad you guys are here um, first because I wanted to ask you first before we begin, um, not only is this being recorded, but it's also being live streamed to Facebook. So just know that. You all look great. Janet, you just froze. You good with all this recording? Okay. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, I guess, watch what you say. Um, so the two of you were um, on the clearing last Sunday. So I just wanted to, I know, Janet, you said you loved it, but you were feeling exhausted, kind of like I was. I'm just now coming back to normal. Is that what it was like for yes. you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I think I, I used the word, I felt like I was poisoned. Um, it just was like so intense how terrible I felt. But um, today's the best day. Yeah. Yeah, so mine too. Good. Mine too. <clears throat> I thought yesterday was good. And then I was like, well, maybe it's just the weather. Why? Because it was so gorgeous out. Mm -hmm. And then today I feel even better. So, and that's, uh, Arden, what about you? How did you feel after that? Um, it was definitely releasing <laughs> for me. Um, I'm still struggling with some other issues, emotional issues. So, um, but it's funny that the poisoning thing, because I had a session with her before anyway, but I've said that for years. Like, I felt like I'm, I feel like I'm being poisoned. Like, I, I, I said, I didn't know how else to describe the way I always felt all the time. With the clearing? Like before, like most of my life, I've said that to myself. Like, I feel like I'm being poisoned. Oh, oh, because wait, didn't she say that? Yeah, she said that she discovered that all of it. And I was poisoned this lifetime, but I, I obviously it was poisoned in another lifetime too. That I completely she completely forgot that she said that. Yeah, that she picked. Yeah, she picked up on that for us. That she found that we're all were poisoned in some other lifetime. So, and it's funny because I said that for years this lifetime. Like I feel like I'm being poisoned like all the time. So yeah, Janet, I was wondering when you sent me that email. You said I feel like I've been poisoned. I'm like, I wonder if she's using that word because that's what Catherine said. No, I completely no. forgot that she said that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Insane. And I wrote it down too. I have it written down, and it's totally mackerel. But okay. we hear so much during that clearing. You know, it's so funny because every time I get off a session with Catherine, I get off the phone, and my husband's like, "How did it go?" And I'm like, "Oh my goodness, it was great." And then he goes, "What happened?" I'm like, "I, I don't know." <laughs> like you just I, can't repeat it. There's so much. I feel like I don't. I don't remember anything she said. No, me either. And I try to take notes as she goes. I always take notes. And this has been like 10 years now. And even I go back to my notes and I'm like, this doesn't feel as powerful as it did, you know, mm -hmm. when she was telling it to me. But that now I've learned that it's not so important to take the notes because it's more just about how you feel afterwards. And just like she always says, like feeling what you feel and notice what you notice and right. just let it go. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I try to write down the stuff when she says affirmations. I try to write that stuff down, like like, like the one she said last time and the one she said in a session with me about I'm self-sustaining and stuff like that. You know, I try to remember those things. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> those affirmations are great. I do write them down. Angelica, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I know you know Arden, but meet Janet. Janet, this is Angelica. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. She always teases Sorry. us by taking these calls in her backyard because she's in California and the sun is oh, out and it's always gorgeous. You know what? I'm not actually in my backyard. I'm in Saratoga because I have a dentist appointment at 3.30 and I got here early. So I just came to this like little outdoor cafe and I'm sitting out here. <laughs> well, good timing because we were just talking about the um, clearing with Catherine and I know you weren't on the last call, but you've had sessions with her and we were just talking about how after the clearing, it's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting mm -hmm. releasing all of that. And then you're supposed to just stay calm and allow the healing to come in. And, you know, you're like, all right, when's it going to hit? And then little by little each day, you start feeling better. Do you have the same experience with private sessions? You know, 
I, I have had that experience. Um, it, it's been different for me because I think I have like so much of different things going on that I'm dealing with mentally, physically, you know, my diet, like a lot of things are coming together. And I do feel like Catherine has definitely helped me um, realize where a lot of these feelings are coming from. And it, it's just, it, it, she opens up a lot of doors and, you know, so they, or, you know, uncovers a lot of things for you that you're like, wow, I didn't really realize the connection there. Isn't that amazing? I know. I yeah. Know. They say that um, our physical bodies are really just a printout of what's going on in our minds, like emotionally and mentally. And when you think of it that way, you're like, well, if I can figure out where this shit is coming from, right? Maybe I can release it or working with Catherine, hopefully she goes into the background and just releases most of that stuff that doesn't need to be there for us. It definitely, I think definitely the uncovering, it, it does help us to be able to deal with, you know, these things much, you know, more easier, um, but also to handle it in different ways. Because we're so used to, I think, especially people with autoimmune disease, we're like, those people pleasers and we're always like wanting to be in control of things and you know just be that bossy person I'm I'm a bossy person and I want to control everything around me and I want to make sure like everybody's life is perfect you know so that my life can be perfect but I'm realizing like no I gotta let that go I got I have to just allow what's what is going to be is what's going to be and I have no control over it even watching you say that my god you've come so yeah that's just it's really nice to hear you say that that's great that must be yeah amazing. yeah and you have i totally MS? forgot angelica you have ms yes i do yeah yes. everybody in this group everybody in the group has um ms for right okay. now i was keeping it to everyone with ms and then maybe later on we'll move into chronic illness more auto but keep it to autoimmune diseases yeah. Right. But I was just thinking it's hard to be the boss when you have MS <laughs> because it's, it feels but, like, but maybe just think about like yourself before this diagnosis, how were you, you, you were the boss of every, you try to be the boss of everything. Right. Until of course this disease manifested and then you just feel like you have no control over anything, but really have you had control? No, no. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> I never felt like I was the boss. You know, I was, I was 37 ish when I was diagnosed. And my first symptom was when I was 27. And I think I was, I've always been until, you know, I'm 58 now, but I'm, I'm, I just always think of myself as a, scared little girl you know I had you know always just always frightened I had my mom was always afraid of everything always afraid and I think she gave me some of that when I was little and um that's not who I am now of course but um and even when I was diagnosed it was sort of like yeah, okay. I didn't cry. I didn't fall apart. I didn't, you know, it was sort of like, all right, what do I have to do? Like, tell me what to do. What, what do I, you know, maybe that was because, you know, I was a mother by then and I just, okay, maybe this is, maybe this is what sort of what, what you're talking about too. I didn't allow myself the time to fall apart. I didn't allow it because I had two little boys to take care of and, you know, life's going to go on and I'm going to be fine. And now not so much. Uh, <laughs> so I got to get I have to be boss again, I guess. I don't know. But do you feel like, like, I feel like for me, fear, like, you know, after the diagnosis and being afraid, it's like that fear for me made me want to be in control of where I was, where, you know, what could I do? 
um, to control my environment and, you know, to make sure I was safe all the time. You know, those were, that was the fear in me that I realized my control part, you know, I need to be in control of where I'm at, where I feel safe of just my, you know, who's around me, who, you know, and that's another thing that's a sense of control, you know? So I don't know if you ever felt like that in your fear, but for me, when I had that fear, that's what I always felt like I had to do was control everything around me so I can feel safe. Uh, it, it manifests as perfectionism. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, for me, I had to do everything perfect or I wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, or just, and that's what I'm hearing from you guys too, is um, our control is always, it manifests in different ways. For me, I put my head in the sand and just wished, you know, just hoped everything, actually didn't even think about everything around me. But when there was a problem, I stuck my head in the sand, ignored it. And that's exactly what I did when I first got diagnosed. I would just put my head in the sand and be like, I'm way too busy to have MS. And I would just keep going. And then everything, everything that I ignored blew up in my face, my marriage, my diagnosis, and things at work. And that's where I had to learn to face everything that I was afraid of or else it will blow up so much worse than if I just face it. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have another participant. Jeanette, you're here. If you wanna say something, pop on. I just wanna let everybody know that this is being recorded and you're also being live streamed into Facebook so that everyone can get an idea of what we talk about um, or just really learn from what we're saying. How are you? Good, how are you? Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm Jeanette. Just gonna hide myself. <laughs> you, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. We're talking about it, just fear, and you know, looking back at how things manifested, how we really behaved all through life, because it's all coming to the surface now, and we're seeing how it's playing out in our diagnosis. I have found talking to so many people with MS that we're all very similar. Um, we're all control <laughs> freaks, perfection yeah. freaks. <laughs> Uh, always want to be in control or put our head in the sand and just hope everything goes away. And it wasn't until I faced my fear that everything started coming into play. And that's another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about because the emotional side of healing, I think is harder than the actual clinical side of it. You know, you can follow everything that the the doctors and the nutritionists tell you to do because they give you the plan. Do this, take this, right? But then what about the emotional side? Nobody says, feel this, don't feel that. Janet, you're nodding your head. Well, Mm -hmm. my experience has been what they do say is take this antidepressant, (laughs) you know? Um, And I've tried to explain to them I'm not depressed and I truly don't feel like I am depressed. And I'm, and I kind of say, fix this. And whatever you are, you're seeing that you think I need an, an antidepressant, is there sadness? Yeah, absolutely. There is some sadness, but I'm not depressed. I'm not going to hurt myself. I think about dying. <laughs> I do. I'll admit that. Um, but, um, That's what they do. They don't, they, they just know how to, you know, here's the drug. You know, I remember when it, when I was diagnosed, it was the ABC drugs and the doctor just said, pick a drug, you know, that's all it was. And I I remember saying to him, is there anything I should be doing nutritionally? And he said, no, Mm -hmm. no. So, I just got out of a neurology appointment, just so you guys know. Yeah. I had a neurology appointment at 10.30, this, or my time. And um, my neurologist wanted to see me because, you know, this past summer I wasn't doing very well. I had all these symptoms. And, of course, I've changed my diet, you know, um, starting in September. It's been since, since September. I pretty much eliminated all meat because I did do some sensitivity tests and I'm working with the functional medicine doctor. And a lot of my symptoms that I was having have subsided. 
they're not completely gone. I still have symptoms. They're a little bit more manageable. Um, these last two months I've gone completely vegan and that's just because that's what works with my body. I'm not saying that it works for everybody else, but for me, it's been working. And she wanted to just to test my strength and see where I was to think about doing a disease modifying medication. She said, depending on me coming in and seeing her, we'll make that choice together. So, so you're not on any, you're not on a medic MS drug now? No. So she just basically was like, you know, satisfied with how my strength was and everything. But of course, like, let's wait another six months and see where you're at. But in the meantime, you know, like I told her, I go, initially, when I first started coming to see you, I was like, give me the drugs, give me anything, fix me, you know, I want you to fix me, fix me, I just want to be back to my old self. And but I told her, I realized, you're not going to fix me, or not my general practitioner, you nobody else, you know, I have to do my work too. So it's not just about what doctors are going to do for, for us. It's what we have to do for ourselves. You know, we have to find a, our path to healing, you know, whether it be mentally, emotionally, physically, in every aspect. And I told her, you know, I'm seeing a therapist, I'm seeing a functional medicine doctor, you know, that's helping me with my gut issues, which I've had my entire life. And, you know, I'm doing acupuncture, I'm doing yoga, I'm doing a lot of different things just for myself. And it's, it, she, she, I told her, you know, you're never going to be able to do those things for me that I've done for myself. You know, you're, you're going to be able to give me this disease modifying medication, but that's it, you know, and just monitor how I'm doing. And the funny thing was, is at the end of our meeting, she said, we have, um, we're doing this clinical study because Stanford, I go to Stanford medical center here in California. It's like one of the biggest research hospitals, you know, schools, everything for medical and, um, this clinical, like um, study person. She's like, I want you to meet her because we're doing these studies on the microbiome and MS. And we want to study people that basically have MS and they're managing it with their diet. We want to take some blood from you, look at it. We also want to study people with MS that are not doing anything as far as diet, mental health, lifestyle changes and see how their disease is manifesting in them. And then we're also going to do like people that are not diagnosed with it, with, with any autoimmune, no MS and compare their guts and see where they're at and why, why are you not getting worse or why are you getting, you know, why are you getting worse? You know, who's not doing anything about their diet or anything else. So I was like, so, you know, you believe that there's a connection. She goes, I do. Wow. That's amazing. She goes diet, mental health, you know, she says stress is like one of the biggest factors in MS. Mm -hmm. So I met with this lady that's doing this study and she's like in six months, she goes, you know, we're probably going to ask you to do some more blood. She goes, and then a fecal test because they want to check my boop. To see what I what I have in there. Yeah, I've done the fecal <laughs> to see, test to see what the connection is. You know, to see what the connection is in so-called healthy people, and then us who are diagnosed with MS, because they said that they've already seen differences in our gut health. Yeah, yeah. When I got tested in the beginning, it was all <laughs> the green, yellow, red scale, and everything was in the red. I had no good. I had no good bacteria. And I mm -hmm. think that's what brings the, the resistance down and allows the, the virus inside to just attack at will because we have no defenses. We're left completely defenseless. So, and the microbiome, yes, that's the nutritional part. And then there's the emotional part of it too. And stripping away all the shit, let's say that's the bad bacteria and bringing in all the good bacteria, which is all the healing and the good stuff that we tell ourselves, like our self-talk. Mm -hmm. Who? And then one, one thing that you have to understand though, too, when we're in these stressful situations and we're just so highly stressed, it shuts off our digestion, yes. which then affects us in other ways. It's just like all connected. 
Yeah. You know, and that was something I was talking with, with the, with the clinical researcher person. And she's like, it's all connected. She's like, we're finding that everything is connected and just how much different autoimmune diseases, basically in blood work, it shows like MS, diabetes, Crohn's, celiacs, all these other diseases show the same in blood work, but it manifests in each different person differently because depending on the autoimmune disease you have. Yes, it does. We just label the disease based on the symptoms. Hello, mm-hmm. Lana. how are you? It's good to see you. So, um, does anyone have anything to say about what Angelica just said? Like, how does that resonate with all of you with the emotional side, the clinical side, and just getting rid of the bad and putting in the good. I, I wanted to talk a little bit before someone answers. I just wanted to talk a little bit about my 15 year old. She also has the Epstein-Barr virus inside her and she's dealing with terrible acne. And that's exactly what I went through at her age. And she's also dealing with the kids at school, trying to bully her, but she's my daughter. So she's handling it very well. And they're, they're making jokes about how she fears gluten. And she's like, I don't, I don't fear it. It's just not good for me. So I don't eat it. Everyone, and they, they wave a French fry in front of her and they're like, oh, you fear this? And she's like, it's, it's not fear. I just, I don't want to eat it because it makes my skin look bad. Right. Right. But she's growing up in an environment where this is what mom has always done her entire life, you know, and she's watched me at family gatherings, which Easter is coming up. And it's, I mean, my sister has made me cry in the past with Jeanine, I made this for you. I'm like, but if I can't see the ingredients, Christina, I can't eat it. I know you have good intentions, but I can't take that chance. It just takes me down. So I'm wondering, Julie is growing up in this environment of, yeah, you you, you eat to heal. That's what you got to do. And she also does Reiki and all that stuff with Catherine. So this is her environment. But what about for everyone else like us? Like how how does your self-talk come in when you have to deal with bullies, whether it be family or, you know, Janet, Arden, do you guys deal with that? I don't I don't really have anyone in my life to tell me what to eat um, or not to eat. Um, I just decided to go gluten free a long a while back and um, but speaking of like the emotional aspect, I had a lot of pain with my um, MS and fibro. And I studied the last year, I studied neuroscience, which is like reprogramming the amygdala in the brain to not interpret those signals as pain. And that's probably how I got off my pain meds. And I did it really quick in two months, which is like not possible that I'm told. You don't, you can't do that off of methadone. You don't get off that drug like that. Wow. Um, but I think the emotional thing is really important. I, I think I'm epically failing at it right now, but um, <laughs> it's definitely a factor. A That's big fact. what you got to touch on. You say you, you're epically failing at it right now. When looking back, I know I have said that exact same thing. I am failing at this right now. God, I suck. And it sounds like that's what you're saying to yourself right now. What would your best friend say to you? To get you to feel better and to see the bright side. If, if you were your best friend, what would you say to you right now? Well, I'm walking and talking. And I mean, I'm pretty functional right now. I mean, I did something right. Keep going. What else is going good in your life? Well, I've had a big shift, as you know. You know what's happened to me, you know, with my ex and stuff. But um, I am am reaching out, trying to find people to connect with. So... um, I'm not just sitting in my, uh, whatever it's called, my, my stuff. You say the shit, <laughs> sitting in the shit, just say it. In the shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I did something right. Even the doctors don't understand it. They're like, 
whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Cause they certainly, they certainly don't have answers and I refuse their medications right. all this time because I thought they have more side effects than what I'm having now. So why should I take those drugs? Right. I mean, why should I risk myself having a heart attack or getting more poison? Like I already felt, like I said before, I already felt like I was poisoned. Right. Why should I poison myself some more, you know? Um, so let me ask you something. <clears throat> if this was a lesson, if you were being taught a lesson right now, what do you think that lesson is? Patience. <laughs> Patience and acceptance of myself. Mm -hmm. Just being where I am. I'm having this restless leg syndrome right now, which is making me crazy. Yeah. And I can't seem mm. to figure it out with diet. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why I'm having it right now. It's crazy. Because it's really aggravating. I don't think it has anything to do with MS. I don't think. I think it's just something that happens to people and I haven't figured it out what, why. Right. Yeah. Um, so I just... <laughs> saw on Facebook said it's something to do with your metabolism, which is interesting. So we don't really know exactly. So there's a bunch of theories out there. And just like with anything else, we have to be our own guinea pigs and just keep testing different things out. I know the celery yeah. juice, but you've been on it. That's the that's the thing that I know has worked for other people. You know, those cluster salts and the celery juice relax those muscles, the potassium, the magnesium, all of that relaxes the muscle. But you've been doing that consistently. Yeah, pretty much. I've taken a little break right now because I'm so I'm kind of burnt out, but mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing that again. Like sometimes I switch it up. I don't do it in the morning because it makes me not eat all day oh. if I do all that in the morning for some reason. Mm -hmm. So I sometimes just do it in the evening. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The rest of the leg one, that's a tough one, but I think you're doing good. Emotionally, I think you're doing good. You know what? It's okay to say, I'm in the shit right now. I'm learning something powerful. I don't know what the hell it is, but I'm going to learn it and I'm going to learn it fast so it passes. Oh, God, I hope so. Janet, do you think this is a lesson for you? Whatever you're going through right now, do you think it's a lesson? And if it was, what is it here to teach you? <laughs> no, I actually... This, I, I've been uh, feeling so good mentally this past, um, since we, you know, Sunday was the, Sunday was the call. Yeah. Um, my neighbor, my neighbor texted me last week and said, um, so um, she has a horse and she has her horse at a stable and Colt's neck and this woman comes and does this thing on the horses and they do it to people now and it could help with your MS. And I had no idea what she was talking about, what it was. And I'm like, come over. <laughs> like, I'm like, whatever it is. Yes, come on. So, um, so the woman came over last week and it's called Magna Wave. I think it is. And it's somehow she puts these pads. It's she came with like this machine and these tubes coming out of it and pads. And she would put them, she ran them up and down my legs all over. And um, that might have been another reason why I felt so crappy. Um, but I don't know. I just sort of feel like I'm back on to what are we going to try? What are we going to, you know, what are we going to do to, to feel better? Um, and, you know, get my head, my head's in a pretty good place. We just got to get the body um, to follow. And do you remember when I um, was on the call Sunday I told you about watching that movie and the guy, you know, this guy says, my mom has MS and, you know. Oh yeah, the cross and, to bear. Yeah, and he says, we all have our cross to bear. And I'm like, 
what a jackass, what a stupid thing to say. What about her? What about, this was my mom and she gave birth to me and I'm like, you know, of course I want to do whatever I can to help her, but no, you know, he has a cross to bear. Right. Last night we're watching um, um, on HBO, there was a documentary about the cruise ship that was stuck in China that had all the people with the coronavirus on it. Mm -hmm. And so people were videotaping themselves and I'm just watching it. I'm just like innocently watching it. And here you go, this guy comes on and he goes, you know, my wife has MS. And so, you know, her immune system is altered. And I'm like thinking to myself, why does he keep following me? Why does it, oh, why is it always coming up? I don't understand. What am I missing here? Why do I need to just stop watching television? And it's just always right there. It's always right in front of my face. And I, it's upsetting. Well, why do you think that keeps showing up for you? Why do you think that keeps thrown in your path? What do you think it is? I watch too much television. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe but in all the things say you do watch a lot of tv let's just say that you do i don't know if you do maybe you do you watch a lot of tv but it seems like there's a there's a pattern of things that are sticking out to you like are other things sticking out to you you know like i don't know like there's is there a lot of fishing going on no that doesn't mean anything to you so maybe there's a lot of fishing going on but it didn't mean anything to you is there a lot of you know um people falling in love and you know that's pissing you off no maybe but it's not standing out to you why is this standing out to you you have a thought right that's on a, a vibrational frequency whatever you keep seeing on tv has a completely different frequency and it's clashing with your belief let's say forget the thought the belief it's clashing with that belief so that's why it stands out to you you're like oh i'm irked by that what the hell do i keep seeing that for when all the other things you're probably seeing, if you're watching a lot of TV, you're probably seeing a lot of a lot of things, but they're not irking you the way that is. So why do you think that one stands out to you? Well, it does. I have it. I have. It's weird, Janine. It's just weird. It's just, you know. I'll, I'll put the television on right now and that stupid commercial for the drug will come on. And I'm, I'm like, they're following me. What is it? Why? Why? I have to get it off. Just get it off of me. Do I have a sign on my back? What, what is happening? I just, I don't like it. Is it possible that you don't want to deal with it? You don't want to talk about it. You don't want it in your face. You just want to forget about it. So every time it pops up and is thrown in your path, you're like, oh, there it is again, a reminder. I don't, I don't want to be reminded of that. Well, I, I don't think that, um, I can't forget about it. You know, the minute I get up to walk, there it is, you know. Um, and then you turn the TV on and there it is. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about, you know, getting up to walk, or maybe there is, but the TV, I think that's what it is. I think you just don't want any more reminders of it. You're reminded enough. So you see it on TV and it's like, what the hell? I can't get away from this for two minutes. I'm sitting down, I'm not walking. So I'm not being reminded of it, I'm watching TV and there it is again. Right. So is it like this little voice in the back of your mind that's going, do something, do something, do something. Heal yourself, let's go, get better. You should be better by now. You should, you should, you should. Tony Robbins is like, stop shooting all over yourself. Everyone's shooting all over themselves. Is yeah. that what you're doing? I should that I should be doing this. I should be here. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. It's just very strange. It really is so strange. Sometimes it has to do with where your attention is. Like it's like if you're thinking about a certain car and then you see the all those cars. That's exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like our attention is on the MS, so everything reminds us of the MS that either gonna piss us off or upset us instead of focusing on something, not that you're ignoring it, but focusing on something else mm -hmm. that in a, a more positive. 
right. I don't know. Because I know with the pain that I had within my MS, it was so severe that I would just scream, scream and cry, scream and cry. And then I had to, when I felt the pain, I would say, I have to tell my brain that, you know, thank you for sharing, but I'm not interested mm -hmm. in that particular sensation because it's not correct. There's nothing broken. There's nothing wrong. So send a different signal. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that helps, but. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, I guess maybe I just need to not take it so personally, <laughs> you know? Yes, like, all right. It, you had to have that line in that movie, but it wasn't just like the actor didn't just turn and say, Janet, <laughs> my mom has MS. Like, he's not speaking to me directly. <laughs> You know, okay. Thank you. I just will try not to take a personal. Basis. No, it's I, I totally get what you're saying. Because I know like when I was diagnosed and then like my, you know, it wasn't like it was a secret with my family. You know, the people who knew were people who were closest to me. But then eventually they're like, oh, guess what? I have a friend that has MS. Oh, this person has MS. Oh, that, you know, and then everybody like now I know like a bunch of people in my personal life, you know, where I'm at and they have MS and it's like, Oh, you know, all of a sudden all these people have MS and I'm just like, shit, like, is this for real? Like, why didn't I know about this before? And it's because, because now it's like something that it's not something that identifies us, but it's just this diagnosis that we have, you know, and it's just like, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I see those stupid commercials on TV too. And I'm just like, yeah, these people are just trying to fill us up with drugs and I'm not going to do that. So, you know, mm -hmm. I just ignore it. And, you know, I try to put my mind in a different place um, when I see these things or especially, you know, it's like, why do they not ever advertise like positive, like autoimmune commercials? Like, hey, I'm living with MS and I manage myself so great, you know, and look at you can do this too. They don't do that shit. They like, show you people it. walking with a, with a cane or they show you somebody walking in a wheelchair and it's just like, it's just so negative. And it, that puts that mental image in our head. Like we need the medication because we're going to get like that. Yeah. And no. that is the that reason for whatever the, the drug is, you know, they list the side effects right there on the commercial oh. too. So you're like going to be bleeding from your eyes and you're going to, you know, it's like ridiculous. Mm -hmm. but they sell a lot of drugs well because people want people want the quick fix you guys this group is the select few i call you guys the one percent because you are the one percent of the population who says no i don't want a quick fix actually i want to heal my body so that this doesn't happen again you guys are you guys are very different in that so i you know this is minding your soul this group is your advertisement for this is what it could be. That's exactly what I wanted to do for everybody to give you another vision of what MS could look like. I wish I had more pictures of when I was fat and paralyzed. I have that one picture because I would shy away from cameras at, at all costs, but this is your advertisement and we're going to get more and more people to say, this is what MS looks like. I was paralyzed. I was sick. I couldn't walk. And now here I am. And MS is just one of those. Oh yeah, that's right. I do have it. Can everyone imagine a time in your life when you forget you have MS until maybe it comes up on the TV and you go, oh yeah, that's right. I do have MS. You, you know, and I think, and I think that that's, what's so powerful with your mind is you, you take your mind into these negative things. So it's like MS negativity. Oh, I'm going to be, you know, disabled. I'm going to be this way, you know, and it's always these negative, negative, negative things where for me, I'm trying to change it into something. I say, okay, I see MS. You know what? I'm healing. I imagine myself healing. I imagine myself on the beach in Jamaica, running around with a beautiful tan and my body's functioning, you know, and this is what I tell myself all the time. I'm healing, you know, whatever I'm trying to get that negative self-talk or I'm never going to get better. This is going to be the worst. I, I feel this way. I say, nope, my body's in the process of healing. 
I imagine my spinal cord healing. I imagine my brain healing. I imagine just being full of life. You know, I imagine myself being happy, you know, and that's what I have to do for myself to continue this. And I, I'm not going to go down that negative, that negative path. I can't do that anymore. I've already, I stayed there for too long already. I'm done That's with that. That's what I want you to touch upon because everyone is going to look at Angelica for the first time and go, oh, well, that's just her. That's no, just it's not. Her. Right, exactly. <laughs> I met Angelica before the summer. I think we were just coming into the winter, maybe the end of the summer. It was in September. Okay, good. So we're just going into the fall. This was not Angelica in September she has done so much work to get to where she is. So if anyone in this group or in Facebook right now is watching her and going, oh, well, that's just her personality. She was born like that. No, she wasn't. She did a lot of work, a lot of inner work and she keeps doing it. And now she's at the point where she's like, you know what? It's not gonna take me down, I'm healing. And this is where I'm at and I'm happy with where I'm at. If you don't mind, <clears throat> Angelica, the one thing that I do wanna tell everybody is the headaches. I could not believe she had a headache for three years every day. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a three-year headache. Yep. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's not like completely, completely gone, but right. I would say, you know, when it started, it was like, I had like half of my face completely numb. I couldn't feel my teeth. I had like, somebody was nailing nails into my head. And, um, I was on Percocet, I was on oxycodone. I was on all these medications to get rid of these headaches. Um, nothing touched it, nothing. And I had these headaches for in July of this year would be four years. And I would say within the last, like maybe four or five months, it's gone down significantly, significantly. And I think it has a lot to do with my diet. You know, I got rid of all those animal products and it's, it's helped me and, um, my inflammation levels have gone down. I think I mentioned to you guys now, my inflammation levels, um, during the winter time, there were still like, it's like a CRP test. I think that your doctor takes and it measures your inflammation levels. Mine was still like five point something. It was high. Now it's like at a 1.7, which is low <laughs> it's like pretty normal and I don't know it, it's gotten better not completely gone because sometimes I'll have those days where it's there but you know and I still you have haven't even hit you haven't even hit a year yet and look at all of that progress right so on a scale of one to ten when I met you your headaches were a ten and now your headaches are at what level would you say on average maybe like a two three yeah a two three so when that's the purpose of coming into groups like this, so that we can see that it is, it's a journey. It took me 10 years and the people that I'm working with, I, I, this is why I'm working with them because I don't want someone to take 10 years to heal. I want them to learn from all the things that I did and all the things that everyone in this group is doing because I don't know everything. We're all going to grab little bits and pieces from everybody. Not everyone wants to, you know, go vegan, but you know what? That's what I'm sure, Angelica, you didn't want to go vegan. I mean, everyone loves a good steak, right? You know, well, it's like initially it was like I was still eating, you know, meat and then I stopped the beef and then I stopped the pork. We tried to reintroduce pork again. I got severely constipated and sick then I was still eating chicken and chicken broth you know like bone broth and I was having seafood I did a food sensitivity test um, which Holly had recommended and I did it and it showed that I'm sensitive to chicken I'm sensitive to eggs which I knew I was sensitive to eggs because every time I ate eggs I would feel kind of nauseous I had already given those up and I was just like chicken and eggs you know is on there I'm like get rid of the broth get rid of, rid of everything so I'm like okay no more chicken and then eventually just I was like well you know what I'll give up the seafood too so I gave up my salmon and my my other foods and I was just like I've just been going full in and I've been doing a lot of green smoothies salads you know um I've, I've been trying to eat more live food and when I mean live food is like not cooked. And so 
because I just want to get the most nutrients out of my food as I can. And it's not for everybody, but you know, I, I want to maintain my, my lifestyle the way it is. And I'm not going back. Like I'm going to be a better, a better version of my old self. Like I used to say, I want to be my old me. I want to be the way I used to be. I don't want to be that old person because that old person got me to where I am now. I want to be even better than what I was. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really do. I think it's so important for everybody to see the journey and it's not easy. It's hard as hell. We're all climbing mountains here trying to get there. And even when you get to a point where you want to be at, right, then you, then you take on the next chunk and you're like, all right, I got to climb this mountain. But yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see that everyone's fighting, fighting hard. Well, actually just, um, <clears throat> um, I've been doing, do you know um, Purple Carrot? It's called, it's a meal subscription. Oh yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah. So, and it's so, it's all plant-based. So, um, so I get three meals a week and so the so I know for sure three I'm probably I'm probably like um only eating meat twice a week maybe um but I mean she's just so right with so I just I ate dinner before I, I kind of just eat two meals a day and I ate before we started this call and it's just amazing because um there's no running to the bathroom there's no stomach problems there's it's just it's clean it just is clean you know um so the light you feel so much lighter yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i don't eat a lot of meat because my daughter's vegetarian she's and it's hard to cook for all these different people. My husband, the meat eater, and then there's me. I'm like, well, I might as well be vegetarian and just make things easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeanette, you're awful quiet over there. Did you want to add anything? I'm just listening to okay. all of you. Um, I was recently diagnosed back in September. Um, I'm currently, I'm expecting right now, so I'm not on treatment, but I refuse to go on treatment after we deliver the baby. Um, I'm a pescatarian, so I don't eat meat. Okay. And I want to say I'm fairly healthy. Um, what I do need to give up is gluten. I started working on that journey, but then I got pregnant and everything just went downhill. <laughs> like you said, it's a journey. It's a journey. Yeah. When you want to get back up there, when you have the headspace, if you want to do it again, I have a gluten-free guide I can send to you and help you with that. It's, yeah. it's not easy, but it's not as hard as we think it is. But how are you feeling? How are your symptoms? I'm feeling great. Um, one of the symptoms I was go experiencing was with my eyelids. Um, my right lid just wouldn't shut. Mm -hmm. um, I was also diagnosed with Bell's palsy back in 2014, like half my face went numbed, but I have a feeling I was misdiagnosed. I have a feeling it was just a flare up, um, but I'm feeling good. My doctor, in fact, I saw my neurologist a, a, a month ago and he doesn't know what to put me on after I have the baby because I look very healthy. I feel healthy but I have a lot of lesions in the brain and in my spine. So he's just not sure what to put me on, but I'm not gonna get on anything. Good. God willing. Good. You do what you want to do. You yes. Do what feels right to you. I still have lesions on my brain and on my spine. I have the same lesions there that I had back when I was first diagnosed. So your lesions yeah. don't mean anything because your brain will, um, your signals will find a way to go around the lesions. Just like in a traffic jam, there's a detour around the accident. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing in your brain and in, on your spine, e everywhere in your body. Your body will create the detour. And that's why when I was first getting healthy and my symptoms were first going away the first couple of years, anytime that I got sick, like really sick with like a fever, let's say the flu I had a couple of times, I wouldn't be able to walk because that was my original, the lesion on my spine, the signal would stop and then not continue to my legs. So that's why I was paralyzed in both my legs. 
So I'm getting healthy. I'm getting healthy. I get sick and my, my body's like, I'm too tired to make the detour. I can't do it. And it stops at the lesion. Even mm. now though, I've got, it's been over 10 years. Even now I can still get a fever. I can still get sick and my body just takes the detour because that's now the groove. That's now the path of least resistance. So don't worry. You continue doing what you want to do. You feel good and trust that your body will make those detours and you don't have to worry about those lesions. Yeah. It's just, you know, I, I'm part of these other groups on Facebook. I'm sure. I don't know if many of you are yeah. and people talk about two lesions in the brain and how they feel so ill. And then I'm like, Oh my God, I have like 20 plus lesions in the brain. Like, I don't know what's happening. But the number of lesions don't have any correlation to how you feel. So <clears throat> there's so much information out there in the groups. And for years, I, I steered clear of all of those groups because I just wanted to tell everyone, no, 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 that's not it. Let me let me show you something different. But it's hard yeah. to people thrown out advice. It's overwhelming. Yeah. I was very down like the first month. I was I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh my God. And then I started doing research online and First all these, you do. <laughs> I know and people like, you know, they can't walk, they can't do this, they can do that. I'm like, oh my God, that's going to be me. Oh, no. That's what we were talking about earlier about you get this vision in your head yeah. and that's what your body is now working towards because, well, what else is there? This is MS. This is what's going to happen. And I love giving the analogy of the necklace. So you, we're all women here, so we probably all know this. When you put on a necklace and you first put it on, you can't find the clasp. It doesn't go, right? So then what do you do? You take it off and you look at it. Mm -hmm. and then you do it again and it always works, right? The reason is you gave your brain a target to work towards. It's not like you can see it any differently back here for the second time. But once you saw it, you have a target now. So your brain will always go towards the target. So that's exactly why when everyone gets diagnosed, they always go, I was fine until I got diagnosed. You know, I only had a little numbness. I got diagnosed. I got so much worse. You'll see that in all the groups. Too. And that's because when they got diagnosed, the doctor told them that this could happen. Then they went and did their own research and they heard all the horror stories. And then they went into the groups and heard firsthand the horror stories from the people who really do like to play the victim a little much in those groups. So now our brain has the perfect picture of what MS looks like. So the brain goes, oh, now I know what to do. Okay, we're gonna be paralyzed. We're gonna be tired. We're gonna drop our foot. And then we don't reach for the foods. We don't even see the, the things that are put in front of us that can help us. Like we were talking about before, once you're attuned to something, it's like going to buy a car and you're like, oh, I'm gonna get this yellow Volkswagen because it's different and I love it, right? And I've never seen it out on the road before. You get it out on the road and you're like, holy shit, it's everywhere yeah <laughs> right now you're just seeing it everywhere it's the same thing in your brain when you have a vision that you're working towards everything that you need to complete that vision you will see so if you're working towards illness that's what you're going to see if you're working towards a healthy body and what ms could look like right here well then that's what you're going to see so do you see the difference there yes yes thank you yeah you're welcome yeah I'm very, I feel good. I don't, I haven't even told just my parents and my sister and obviously my partner, but no one really knows about my diagnosis. I don't want this to identify me. Nice. I don't want people feeling bad for me. Nice. I don't need people freaking out on me. Like I have control over it and I'm fine and I will continue doing good. Well. Isn't that so refreshing to hear? That's amazing. That's great. And if for those times that sneak up where that self-talk may be positive, that's when you reach out for that lifeline. You go into this group, you message me and you're like, hey, listen, I need some help. I'm in the valley. I need someone to pull me up. Do that. Reach out. Utilize your resources. And this is one of them. Thank you. I'm very happy to be part of this group. Oh, wonderful. We're happy to we're happy to have you. I'm Thank coming you. up with a new tagline. I'm trying to, you know, test them out. <laughs> I'm like, all right, minding your soul. If you're receptive to, if you have MS and you're receptive, to, receptive to a lifeline. Oh, forget it. I don't know. I still work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're coming up on an hour. I see people um, dropping off here. Does I just wanted to show one, one thing, a yeah. little show and tell. Um, so this is a book 
called um, What's Missing from Medicine by Sarai Stanzik. She's up in North Jersey and I went to her. Um, she's an infectious diseases doctor and she has MS. Mm -hmm. And she actually, um, when she was doing her residency, um, she was basically in a wheelchair um, and, um, you know, was going downhill quickly. And she saw an article about wild blueberries. And from there, it just, everything changed for her. She changed, mm -hmm. you know, do you know? Who yes, she is? I just follow, I follow her. She just um, celebrated her 25 year anniversary of her diagnosis by walking 25 miles. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. She's also on Amazon Prime, Prime Video. There's a documentary called Code Blue. And so she talks about medicine in general and the state of medicine and, and how doctors are so pharmaceutically driven and, you know, what we could do with diet. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's pretty interesting. So it's, she doesn't really, I mean, she talks about her MS a little bit, but it's more about lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So if anyone is interested in that. <laughs> yeah, it's a great book. It's a mm -hmm. great book. That's great. I got to read that. Actually, I'll catch the, uh, the Amazon thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I think though on Amazon prime, you have to pay for it. The one that's free on there is the living proof, the Matthew Embry one. Yeah. Thank you for that. I watched that one. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, I watched the Terry Walls one too. It's, it's amazing. They all have the same message. They all have a different way of getting there, but they all have the same message. And you wonder like, how is MS even a thing anymore? If all of these people are out there, you know, curing it and healing it and, and reversing all of the symptoms, you think that it would just like blast out there in, in, in the world, but it hasn't. You know, but you know what the frustrating part for me though is to Janine is like, I know that everybody goes on to these like these MS support groups, you know, and people are like, oh, I tried the diet. It didn't work for me. I tried, but it's like, this isn't something that's just going to work in like two months, three months, four months. You know, this is something that's going to be long-term. This is going to be something that's going to be your lifestyle. It's not something that, oh, I'm just going to test this out. And if like within two months, if my symptoms don't go away, it doesn't mean that it, it, it didn't work because it took us a long time to get to where we're at. And it's going to take a long time for us to heal. So a lot of times when you do see these like things like, oh, that diet didn't work for me. This didn't work for me. That it's like, there's never any further details in the background that say, well, I did this for five years and nothing, you know, it's like, no, it, it's so I, I can't even go onto those groups anymore because I can just focus on me and what I'm doing. And I can't compare myself to anybody else because I'm being on it. I, you know, I can't lie to myself. You know, if I'm sticking to the diet, I'm sticking to it. If I'm cheating, I'm cheating and I'm going to know it, you know. Right. Yeah. The cheating isn't. I, I love to tell the story about Thanksgiving and in, in the Italian family. And Janet, you probably can identify with this. We have more desserts than we do dinner at every holiday. There's always the table that's more filled with desserts. So we're sitting at the table and my sister comes up to me and she goes, how can you not even taste this? Like, I don't understand. Like you didn't even take a forkful. How do you no. do that? And I said, okay, let me paint you a picture. Instead of all of these desserts, I want you to picture Clorox, Pine Sol, laundry detergent, and some fabric softener sheets right over there. I said, if we were sitting here and all of these uh, cleaners were on these beautiful, fancy china dishes, would you be tempted to take a forkful or a spoonful or a sip of any one of those? She's like, Janine, that's ridiculous. What are you saying? That's my sister. I go, Christina, that's what these desserts look like to me. They look like poison. I know I'm not even tempted because I know exactly what they're going to do to me. So yeah, when people say, oh, I only cheat a little bit and it's like, well, yeah, but how did you feel when you cheated? Was it worth it? Yeah. So I, I find a way to indulge. I'm not saying don't indulge, definitely indulge, but just find a way to do it. Right. That's gluten-free or dairy-free or vegan, whatever works for you, right. find a way to indulge like coconut milk ice cream from me. So good. Now I'm doing the medical medium ice cream where you do the frozen bananas, frozen apples and dates in the blender with like a drop of coconut milk. Oh my God. It's like real ice cream. It's amazing. And then you put some dried um, shredded coconut on top of that with some nuts and like mini chocolate chips. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, guys, we're at six okay. o'clock. How's everyone doing? Are we good? We're good. You mm -hmm. want to do this again in a month? Sure. Yes. Cool. All right, very good. All right, well, hopefully everyone had fun. This was in uh, Facebook Live. So if you want to watch us again, it will be in the group. Um, all right, and I'll hopefully see you again in a couple weeks. Okay. Hey, okay, have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.